Welcome to create a four page WordPress website number two, frame it, create your header and footer, websites hat and shoes. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to create our four pages. Um, so we're going to head to our, not here, I was, I was playing, I was styling my site to make sure that it was looking the way that I wanted it to. Um, but I'm going to head to my dashboard. So wherever you are, you're going to want to head to your dashboard as well. And goodness gracious, my computer is loading slowly. Here we go. <laughs> so I've got a theme installed um, and we're going to actually add some pages here. So you're going to head to your pages and add new. And the reason that we're going to do this, and these, these pages are just going to be left blank, but the reason that we're doing this is that we want to be able to have links from our header to each of these four pages that, that we would like on our website. Um, so they're going to stay blank for right now. We'll get to them in a future session, um, but we're going to create them. So some suggestions are going to be your home page, your about page, your contact page, maybe your services, your products, if you're doing a small business, or if you had a different four pages, that is totally fine. Um, so right now, let me actually, I'm going to talk about this in a second. Right now, if you look at your pages, if you just click on pages rather than pages add new, you'll notice that you've got, you know, just a brief sample page here, which you can view if you want, and a draft of a privacy policy. Um, and you'll notice that the things that I styled last time um, exist on this page already. Um, and you'll also notice that it's not perfect yet. You know, it, it takes a lot of design, redesign just experimentation and playing with it. So you can see some of my styles on here and those will be transferred to every new page you make, which is one of the beautiful things of site editing, um, specifically with the block editor, just because um, you can design once and it just automatically gets applied. So let's start by creating each of our four pages. So right now I'm going to add a home page, an about page, I think a contact page. <sighs> And I think, so for this one, this is a, a bird blog that I'm, I'm redesigning from scratch. Um, I think I'm gonna have like a parrots page, like different types of parrots. So rather than a services page. So I'm gonna do this now and I would like you to do the same thing. So I'm gonna click pages, add new. If you attended last time, you'll see your styles are right here. Oof. I'm already noticing that certain things like this this color here is not particularly accessible. I'm definitely going to need to fix that later. But for right now, we're just going to name it and leave it blank. I'm going to click this publish button here. It's going to say, hey, are you ready to publish? The answer is yes. And I'm just going to do that a couple more times. So there's my home page. I'm resisting the urge to start styling it or, or fixing things that are wrong. It's okay. We're going to thrive in the imperfection today. So now I'm going to make my about page. Publish it. Make sure to double click it every time. Head back to my dashboard by clicking the W icon. Once again, add new. Now, let's this is the second part of the page. Push that really quick. Then I'm going to add a bird page. So you do the same thing. Just like this file. Just publish that. Excellent. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the sample page. I, I, I don't like that hanging out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this trash button. This does not delete it forever. What it's going to do is put this in a section over here called the trash. If you click on it, it ex explains a little bit over here. Um, you can either restore pages from the trash or you can delete them permanently, but do know that this is not reversible unless you back up your website ahead of time. So I'm just going to trash anything that I don't need. It's going to move it on over so that way it's, it's hidden over here. And when you're ready, when you have your four pages, and no, you can always delete things later, change things later, this, this just gives us a basis uh, for our header to work from, go ahead and write ready in the box on the right. All right. Pages page to look a little like this. Looks like Lucy's ready, Speedy, yes, Jean's ready, 
Yes, Roberts is ready. Well done, y'all. Just a couple more minutes, just because if you're brand new to this, it can take just a little bit longer. Thank you for designing with us today. So I did that, you're doing that. Oh, and I had a note to myself, haha. -ha. Excellent. Looks like a couple more people are ready. So one thing that I want that I'm going to hit home quite a few times over the, the course of the series is the difference between your site editor and your pages and posts editor. Um, so what we've done now is we've created these four pages. So last week's session, we worked on our, our themes. We were working in the site editor, and that is your theme structure. It's look and feel, it's colors, the way your fonts, you know, appear and function and work and all of that. Maybe not function, either way, but it, it's all about structure, whereas this is all your content. So anything that you write on your about page, any, any contact form you put on your page, if you go to appearance and themes and you decide to switch your theme, anything that you put on those pages will move with you. The colors will change, the fonts will change. Um, now I'm regretting putting this in the, in the trash. I'm going to restore this so that you can see it. <laughs> Um, but it's, it's important to know that, you, you know, you can always change the look and feel of your website. So I've got this sample page. It's in a draft form right now. It's not published. Um, but anything that I write, any quotes, any images, any videos, I can change themes and this will stay. Colors will change. Fonts will change. Structure will change. But this is always yours and always ready to go. So. We're not doing that today, but it's a really important concept and it's a little confusing when you first get started. So just remember when you're looking at the black and white dashboard here, um, anything in pages and posts, anything you put on those pages that does transfer with you. But now we're gonna move into our site editor. So to get there, we're gonna head to appearance and editor. While that's loading, someone asked a question in the chat. If we change the theme and the colors are lost, will they come back to how we had it? If we return to the theme, we set up colors in. Uh, yeah, great question. The answer is yes. So I have this theme here. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but let's say that I switched from a, a different theme. As long as I don't delete this theme out of my dashboard, all of the choices made in last week's session under my styles up here, um, those will revert. So they, like they, they, when I say revert, they will come back. So if I were to make this and change it from blue and green to, I don't know, red and black, um, and the red and black is what I have left it before, I can switch back to that. So really great question. That saved me a couple of times when I've not backed up my website ahead of time. Always back up your website before making major changes. <laughs> um, always good to know. So here we are. This is your site editor. This is the look and feel, colors, fonts, the way things are arranged generally on, on, on your page. Um, and today we're going to be working specifically on our header and footer which I have said multiple times. Okay, can you tell I taught middle school? Ah, oh, repetition, repetition, repetition. <laughs> so um, we're now in, we're gonna work on something known as a header template parts. Um, and what we're doing here in this template part is not going to transfer. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start with our header. You're gonna click on your icon up here. Right now it's probably a W. If you've set a site icon or logo, that may be a slightly different icon. You're gonna click on template parts. And you're going to find your header in your theme. Now, you'll notice I have two here. This theme apparently comes with two. You may have more. You may just have one. Um, I think, I'm trying to remember. So if you're not sure which one to pick, like, hey, which one are we looking at on our home page? Um, if you actually just click into the sidebar over here, the way to tell is through your list view here. And we're going to go over these tools in just a minute. Um, but it looks like I am using the header transparent. So this is a list view. This is a list of every single block in your website. If you're brand new to block themes or WordPress, this list view is your very best friend because it really lets you target what you're looking at. So my template part that we're working on is header transparent. And apparently the theme author left me a note, uh, but now I know, okay, if I'm gonna go into my template parts, looks like it reopened there. Um, 
note it will not be visible in template part please go through the front page site editor huh okay so i picked an interesting theme yours will probably be a little bit more straightforward oh i see what they mean so the, <laughs> i'm sure this is a feature not a bug it sounds like this is very intentional i usually recommend that you always edit your header template parts um here uh, in this template editor. Um, but for whatever reason, this one just isn't showing up the way that it's supposed to. So you stay here, unless you have something weird like I, I discovered. I'm going to head back to the other way that you can edit your template parts, which is just through the template editor. And we're going to talk about what they are in just a quick little video for you. Um, but I'm going to click in here. Let's see, this is my front page, I believe. Yes. So this is my front page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my list view again, and I'm going to make sure that everything that I do here is going to be within this purple template part. So if I click on group, you can see that a little bit of a, a blue outline has been selected. So I'm not going to be working necessarily on anything in this group here. I am specifically working on what you see up here. Fascinating. Ah, oh, every theme is different. So this uh, this button allows me to expand it. You'll be able to see it. Um, but you definitely want to work in your template parts. So we're going to start working on that today. And we have a quick video on template parts. So to familiarize yourself with what these look like, you could always watch this later through learn.wordpress.org. If you'd like to find this specific video later, get the link to that in the chat. All right, I am going to press play. You should be able to hear this. I'm actually going to double check this just because I. Just a quick second. Where did all this stuff go? Oh, this is. Catherine, can you still see me anywhere? Yes, I can see you, but not your screen. It's, oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, there we go. Beautiful. All right. Share my screen. I'm going to make sure that the sound is on. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Just double check with this. And play. If you visit a well designed website, just skip to the end instead of making it full screen. You'll notice that. Of course I did. Here we go. <laughs> One of its strengths is in its consistency. Its headers, footers, and sidebars often have the same or very similar content to make it easy for viewers to find the information they are looking for, no matter where they are on a website. To get this effect, do web designers have to build their headers, footers, and sidebars from scratch on every page in their website? The short answer is no. With WordPress block themes, web designers use a feature known as template parts. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to describe what template parts are and how they work, edit a template part, and remove and add a template part to a template. First, what are template parts? Template parts are a point-and-click, no-code way to create, edit, and use the same headers, footers, and other template parts across a website automatically, applying them to any post or page template that has been set up to use that template part. Template parts allow you to design a header and footer once, and give you a singular place to make future changes, such as if you add a new page, want to change the colors with a company rebrand, or completely overhaul the look and feel of your website. Find your template parts, first head to your WordPress dashboard. Please note that this feature is only available with WordPress block themes, not classic themes. From your dashboard, hover your mouse over Appearance, then click Editor. From here, click on Template Parts. You will be taken to a list of a theme's existing template parts. Some block themes provide more or fewer options, but almost all come prepackaged with a header and footer like you see here in the 2023 theme. From this screen, you have the option to edit an existing template part by clicking the name of the template part, then the pencil icon next to it. 
Let's start by editing a header. Most headers provide, at minimum, the site title and navigation menus to make it easy to find things. From here, I can use the site editor to modify my header template. I'm going to add a site logo and site tagline to this header template part. Once I save it, this change will be applied to every template that uses this header. Let's see this in action. I click the icon in the top left-hand corner, then use the arrows to navigate back to templates. Each template that uses this template part has been updated to include the new logo and site tagline. From the index page to the 404 page, I only had to design this template part once. A word of caution. While you can edit the template parts in their specific template parts section, it's important to know that you also have the ability to edit a template part in any regular template. The changes you make to a template part in the templates section will also be made across other templates that use this theme. For example, imagine that I want to add a cover block to just the header of my home page. If you look at my list view, you'll notice by the indented blocks that I am working within the header template part, not on this individual template, which means that the cover I add here will also be applied to every other template that uses this header template part. You can see it here on this 404 page. To avoid this mistake, always use your list view to ensure that you are not working within any purple highlighted text. Template parts that might be used elsewhere on other templates have a double diamond shape next to them and are indicated by the color purple. What if you want a different header on, say, your home page, but you would like the rest of the website to have a standard header? In this case, you would want to make a new template part. First, I'll navigate back to the template parts dashboard. From here, I can click the plus sign to create a new header. I name it Header Front Page. Select the header template part, and then Create. This will not automatically take me to my new header, so I need to open up my menu again by clicking the top left-hand icon, then selecting the template part. I'm now ready to create my new header. Fun fact, it's possible to put a template part inside of another template part, like you see here. Designing this way would allow me to change my logo, site title, site tagline, and navigation links in one template part, the header, and have that change automatically also affect this new template part for my front page. It's one way that you can design twice, but only edit once. This can save you time in the future so you don't have to update both header template parts if something changes. This step is optional, however, and if you find it confusing, feel free to simply design a second template part here. Now, let's add this new template part to my home page. I'll navigate back to Templates. I'll select my home page and the pencil icon to start editing this template. First, let's remove the old template part to make room for the new one. Using my list view, I locate my header template part. I select the three dots next to it and select Remove Header. I would like to add my new front page header template part above my content, so I use the list view again to select the three dots next to the top block in my list view and select Insert Before. From here, I can either use the plus signs to access the inserter or type slash header or slash template parts. I then select Template Parts block. I select the blue Choose button. I then select the new template part that I created earlier. And voila! My new template header part has been added just to this front page. Because my other theme templates are using the header template, not the header front page template, it will only appear on my home page. Take a look! You can use this process to create, edit, and use other template parts, such as for your footers or general other template parts, such as if you wanted to create a sidebar area. Remember, the goal is to design once and edit once and have all of your changes automatically apply elsewhere. It's a time saver. Please visit learn.wordpress.org to learn more about site editing. Or find this video. <laughs> Happy designing!
Thanks, Past Sarah. I appreciate that. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> All right, so we've got a question. If you want to revert back to the original version for a customized template part, how is that done? A variation of this question came up recently in the fixing WordPress.org community forum. Okay, that's a, a really good one. So let's say that you are experimenting, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you this a little bit um, just really quick. That's a really good question that a lot of people definitely need to know. Let's say that I am editing all of these, and I sub, see what I've got. Let's say that I remove my site logo and I unfortunately have no idea how to put it back. Oh my goodness, I just, I want to try again. So I've removed that from the header there. Um, this change is being applied everywhere because it's all underneath this, this purple uh, template part. If you head to your WICON slash site icon and logo and head to that template part, um, Click on this button down here, manage all template parts. You'll notice that there is, oh, that's new. <laughs> this used to be indicated by a blue dot. Now it says customized. Um, so this means that any changes that I made ha have been applied. Now you should be able to, ah, you can clear customization. So what this is going to do is revert it to the default theme that came out of the box when you first got it. And it'll just do it on this header part like it's not going to undo what we did last week with our styles and our fonts so let me just clear this customization and now because i have my note this won't be like you can't edit it here apparently i'm going to head back to my template where i can also edit this and we're going to see in theory that site logo should be right back ah perfect there it is so let me click into this. Um, I had also customized this before because uh, I was I was having a little bit of trouble um, getting this to, to show up. Um, I will fix it again and we can talk about troubleshooting that towards the end because there are certain things that will happen in every single theme. Um, but you'll notice my site logo is right back there. So really, really great question. Ah, I love it. Okay, so. I have a question for you, the learners, that I would like you to answer. Just no right or wrong answers. Like, in your opinion, what is the purpose of a website header? Like, why, why do most, I'm sorry, why do almost all, like, really solidly designed websites have a header? So, why have a header? And maybe what makes a good header? And it might just be, like, what are some qualities that you like in a header? I know for me, I really like drop down menus. <laughs> drop down menus make me happy. Lisa says brand recognition, easy navigation. Yep. Jean says consistency throughout the site, the same expected navigation. Yes, it makes things easy to find. You know, you see it once, your brain memorizes it, you can find it again. Really great customer experience navigation. It's kind of like the table of contents for the whole website. Wow, imagine if books had that. Just like a sticky header, very top of every page. Hmm. That would be fascinating. Somebody tell Kindle. Anyway, <laughs> um, so there's branding, your logos, all of that. So yeah, um, you clearly have the greatest answers. Ah, this is why I ask you. You say that better than I ever could. So you've seen a lot of these tools in action here. Um, I think, what do I want to do next? I think I wanted to talk about some of what these tools are just really quickly so that people can, can see them. So you're going to find that your site editor has a lot of tools. Um, so I've got this thing that says template reverted. I wonder if I can undo the template reverted. Oh, fascinating. So you'll notice um, there's a couple of buttons here that are wonderful. Um, this is your one of the places where you can use your inserter. This is where you can add brand new blocks or patterns or this, these are all of the different things and we're going to experiment with these a lot more later um, to your templates and template parts. Um, you also have the edit and select mode. I don't use this a lot, Catherine. I don't know if, if you use this a ton, um, but basically, huh, I'm not actually sure what this does. Let me click it and see. I'm curious, do you, do you ever use this, Catherine? I have never used that. 
if someone knows why that, that button exists, I'm sure that it does and that some people use it all the time. I, I very rarely do. I'm always in edit mode, um, which is the default mode. But you also have your undo buttons and your redo buttons. So you'll notice that I had my template reverted, um, but I can also redo it. Apparently you can undo <laughs> revert itself. That was interesting. So I'm gonna redo it, see if that works. Does not, oh yeah, so you can see that my logo disappeared as well. So my undo button goes backwards and forwards. Your list view is your very best friend. This helps make sure that you're editing what you need to be editing and nothing that you don't. Um, you also have a view button. Uh, this is super handy up here because you can see what your website will look like on different size screens. Ho oh, ho. So like, this is what this would look like on a cell phone. Um, and you'll, like, you'll notice that again, it's not perfect. There's some white text in here. There's going to be some things that I need to play with. Resist the urge to, to try and fix all of the things all at once. Today, we're just working on the hats and the feet. Um, but you will also be able to see um, what your header does um, on different things. So if I click this view button, you can see that on mobile, um, my navigation turns into these two little bars here and you may um, be able to adjust that depending. So that's really helpful. And we'll probably look at that a little bit later. Um, we worked on global styles last time. This is the overall look and feel of your website. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's maybe get started working on our headers today. Um, so that's just a very, very brief overview. You will use these tools a lot, but I was thinking, and we're gonna see how this goes, um, that we were going to do some breakout rooms here because there are, I feel like there are gonna be two sets of people here, right? There are gonna be people who have never, like they don't know what site titles, taglines, logos, and icons. If these are new words for you, you're not sure like, how they work um, in a Google search engine, for example, like what shows up and why. Um, I think you should stay here and we'll talk it through. So like you can see this is the website that I'm recreating here. Um, <laughs> uh, you've got, well, this is me going into it. I'm not gonna go into it yet. We're just gonna talk about it, how to set it and how it transfers between websites. So I'm gonna set up a breakout room. If these are new terms for you and you're like, wait, what goes on Google? What's a logo? How does like all of that stay here? Um, we're also going to talk about like how to find images and editing resources. So if you don't have a logo, if you don't have a site icon, if you're, you know, you want to put some images in your header and you're like, where do I even find these resources? Stay in this today. Um, and then breakout room, we're going to make a breakout room. And this one is about creating a sticky header. So let's say that you are familiar with titles, taglines, logos, and icons. There's a new feature that you may not be aware of about creating a sticky header. Um, Catherine is going to run that video. And um, I think I'm gonna I think I'm the bottom part. <laughs> I'm do that. But um, yeah, so it's all about like how to make your header stick to the top of the page. Um, yeah, so I am going to, we're gonna do this as a test run now. I'm going to go to my breakout rooms. Breakout room number one, I'm opening all rooms. If you would like to learn the very basics, stay right here, site titles, taglines, logos, and icons. If you would like to learn how to make your header um, stick to the very top of your page, um, by all means, um, <laughs> join that breakout room and Catherine will share her screen. So I'm trying to, the breakout room should be open. You should be able to find it. Looks like a couple of people are finding it. This is the first time ever we're doing this today. All right. Just a couple more, a couple more minutes and we're gonna talk about choosing your site title, tagline, all of that jazz. If anybody's having any troubles, start to let me know if you're having trouble going to the other breakout room. But I think, just about done, excellent, okay. So let's talk about your site title, taglines, logos, and icons. So I'm gonna head to this. I'm gonna make sure that I'm working in my header. I'm using my list view here to expand that. You should be in your template part. Um, here, you will have quite a few things. So we've got a lot of things grouped together, groups, rows, all of that, page lists. Um, I think I have a video for you at the end of this that will talk about like how to manipulate this and how to like put things next to each other versus on top of each other. Um, but for now, 
let's talk about our site titles and taglines. So the first is your site title. So I called this at the very beginning, Birdie Blog Redesign. Um, and all you have to do to edit this title is select it. You can select it with this right here. Click it. And I'm just gonna call it Birdie Blog because that, that's what my actual website is, it's birdie.blog. Um, obviously this is not live right now, but this title, whatever you name it here, um, does switch from theme to theme. So if you do decide to change your mind later, use a different block theme, go back to a classic theme, whatever you write here does transfer. The way it looks, its colors, all of that is different. So when this goes live, um, that is what is going to appear on Google. Um, so it'll just say birdie blog right up here. So that's the first little bit. Um, the second little bit is using a, a tagline. So the tagline is what displays afterwards, what you actually need to know about parrot ownership. Apparently it's a little too long. You'll notice that Google cut that off, but you can see um, a couple other things like the birdie edit, a wedding blog from the editors at birdie gray. Like that's a short tagline. That's what appears there. So you may be looking at your theme You may be looking at your theme and actually uh, Esther Roberts just asked a really good question. Is it possible to have a title that shows up on Google but not on the actual site? Yes, is the correct answer. Um, so what you're gonna do here is you've got your site title, you should have a site tagline. Let's say that you don't right now. Um, I'm gonna remove this site tagline here just to show you. So let's say that your theme didn't provide a site tagline but you know that you want that to appear here. So this is a feature that you can add and remove. So what I'm gonna do to add it, I'm in my list view here. So double click these three dots, double click the three dots next to site title. I'm gonna write insert after. And this may appear to the right, to the left. I, I've got a, a good little video for you to, to help you figure out like, hey, how do I put things side by side in just a minute? But for right now, let's talk about adding this tagline. Um, I'm going to write this tagline. So one thing I noticed mine is too long, so I may rewrite this. Um, for now, I think too hard. It's just going to be parrot trials, tribulations, maybe real parrot trials and tribulations. So I've added this here. Oh, it's just a paragraph. Oh, make sure that this doesn't say paragraph. So this is just text. What we need to do. You can either type a slash here, or you can use this little blue inserter here. This is a little easier to see, so I like to use it. This is your block inserter. We're gonna look for the site tagline. So I'm gonna select that right there, and you'll see now it's changed to the right site tagline. Real trials and tribulations from a parent ball. Okay, good enough. And I can always make sure that I save it here. So however it's looking, um, how, wherever it is, just by writing this here, even if I remove my site title and tagline, WordPress should include that here in, in Google search. And when you're first getting listed in Google, it does take like six to eight weeks. Um, there's not really a way to speed it up other than just having an active presence on your website. There are a couple other things that's outside the scope and sequence of this. Um, but do know that it's a good idea to, to do a site title and tagline. If you don't have a tagline, it probably will show up something like this, where it just says like Ben and Birdie. This doesn't have a <laughs> site tagline, neither does that. So it's just the title. So it's really up to you, uh, whichever one that you want. I really like having it on there. It's it's really lovely that way. Um, yeah, so that, that's really good to know. So start by giving yourself a title and a tagline, and then we're gonna move on to maybe a logo. Yeah, we'll do a logo next. Let me know when you are ready. I'm gonna go into design in just a minute. Gosh, I may need to make another one just on footers, y'all. <laughs> it's a lot to know. All right, I'm seeing some readies here, okay. So you should have 
a logo. Not all themes come with it. If yours does great, you'll see a little grayed out box over here. Um, I am gonna use my site icon. One thing that I'm noticing is that this is going on top of that. That's just okay. I'm going to delete myself. I'm going to press insert after. In this row, I'm going to move some things around here. And you can see it's going to go here. Because I, I, I generally like my logos on the left. So now I'm going to use my inserter and search for a site logo. So here we've got a site logo. And you've got a little upload button here. So I'm going to select this button, I'm going to select this files, and I'm going to try and remember where I put my site logo because I <laughs> definitely did that. Was it I did blog images? No, I'll use, I'll use my pirate sitting parrot logo here. Parrot pirate rescue, why not? So you may have the same problem that I'm having, which is that like, I don't, I don't have a logo. Um, but if you add it here, um, you're going to have several different options. Um, and this logo is not what appears here. That's a site icon. So that's something to know. You'll notice most of these websites, except for mine, because I apparently didn't set this, um, have this, this next to it. Um, so whether you want a logo or not, it's a good idea to do this because it teaches you how, how, to, um, how to get to the part that allows you to create this icon here or the icon that appears you know, on the tops of someone saying, this is all about brand recognition, being able to have people, you know, find your tab very, very quickly. So as you're playing with blocks for the very first time, you'll notice that you have several options appear. So this is selected with my list view. I make sure that site logo has appeared. Um, and this, this little menu bar will pop up um, on any different one that you select. And we'll get to navigation in a minute. But for this one, you've got a lot of options here. Um, so this is the type of block that it is. You can change it to something else. Um, some themes allow you to change the style from a square to a round one. Um, I'm noticing that this isn't changing. So that makes me think that maybe it's only happening on the front end. That sometimes happens. Um, oh, no, it changed. I just had to save it. <laughs> this is only true with certain themes, though. Um, it looks like when I have it selected, it looks like it's square. So, and th this is just something that is improving all the time. And this is one of the things that they just have, the developers haven't quite gotten to. Um, so that's just something to know. You can also take it out of the logo section. You can move it with these arrows back and forth to see how things work. Um, we're gonna, this'll be in a row. I have a video for us. We'll probably end this and then talk about Twitter. So we've got 15 minutes, so we'll get there. You also have the option to crop your logo now, which is brand new. Um, so you can do that. You can change it to a square. You have all of these different standard ratios you can pick. Um, and you can see the lines before you, you make that change. So it's a, it's a really cool feature. It's brand, it's not brand new, but it's, it's new <laughs> to block themes. Um, you can zoom in on it. You can turn it upside down. Like all of this is brand new. You used to always have to do this in a photo editor. So it's really kind of cool to see that. Um, once you make those changes, make sure you click apply. Otherwise, they won't stick. And then you also have uh, this option here for a duotone filter. So for example, if I wanted to quickly make it black and white, I could do that. If I wanted to make it black and blue, I could do that as well. That kind of matches my, my colors a little bit better. Um, and you can also pick different things. Some of these will be preset by your themes. Um, sometimes this option is turned off entirely based on your theme, but I think most do include it by default. So just keep that in mind. The other place that you can edit this is in another tool over here. These are your settings. So they are in addition to this bar here. They couldn't put everything in here. There are so many options. So when you've clicked your site logo over here, if you click your settings, you'll notice that you can do quite a bit. For example, you can make it enormous or small. You can also click these two dots to do the same thing. And you'll notice that it changes there. Um, I think that that was made to make it more accessible. You can decide, hey, I want this image to be a link, or you can turn that off and not. Um, and then the last thing here is your site icon. So we've talked about the G up here, the W, all these little tiny icons that, that search engines list along the side. You can also choose to use this as a site icon. So if you leave this switch on, you've set your logo, you save it, even if you remove your logo, um, that it icon will will be there. Now, the thing about site icons, though, is that you'll notice this has words on it, Pirate Parrot Rescue. This does not make a very good site icon. Imagine if it was condensed super 
like super small into this. You are also welcome to select a different site icon. And this is the way to find it by selecting site logo in your list view, opening up your settings and clicking the site icon settings. So you'll notice that it's set up there. It's itty bitty, like you can't even read that. Like that kind of looks like a frog. <laughs> That's not going to work. So you can click either remove, which will completely remove it, or you can upload a new one. So I had another one, it's more bird-like than frog-like, slightly better. You have the option to crop this image and we will publish this and save. So, if you are following along, go ahead and set a site icon or site logo. Does anybody need to know where to find a, um, like where to find images that you are free to use for an icon or a logo? You can say yes or me or I do. Where do I find images? Just let me know. It's like I have some some resources for you. Otherwise, set a site, oh, set the site icon. <laughs> sure, free images are always useful. Okay, great question. Okay, so if you're just doing this, by all means, continue, set your site logo, set your site identity. We're gonna watch a video on the end that's gonna teach you a little bit more about positioning. Um, and I think we're probably going to have to add a thing on footers because we didn't get to them. There's so much to learn when you're new and that's okay. Um, so to find free images, uh, you've got several options. My favorite is Pixabay. Um, just because a lot of these images, um, you can search for like a parrot and they are royalty free. You don't necessarily need to use attribution and you can also find things like vector images, right? So like I can do all images, photos, illustrations, or I can say, hey, I want something that's more logo-like. And when I select it, <laughs> I don't think it actually looks for a parent, but you can see that there, these are more, um, more logo-like. So you can take these, you can modify them. Um, sometimes very few will require attribution. So just check out the content license here, free to use under the content license and no attribution required. The other one that is uh, open source and, and done by the WordPress project is openverse.org. These have stricter um, rules and requirements, um, but you can search for content here and then you can search for specific um, specific licenses. So um, if I'm looking for a parrot, there's all of these images here. I can say, hey, I want to, you know, modify or adapt this. If I select that, um, certain ones will come up here. I can say, hey, I want some that are, you know, have the public domain mark, anyone can use it. Um, you can see that different options appear and you can look at each of these and what they are there. Um, so that, that's where I found these images um, was through this. Um, but by just clicking on this, it says, hey, you're in the public domain, you're allowed to use that, or hey, this has been marked as dedicated. And there, there's all of these different licenses. So if you're creating like a business website, um, like a lot of these are like credit the creator, it talks about it, you can read about that just to make sure that you're using it appropriately um, and you don't get in trouble <laughs> at a later point for, for stealing somebody else's work. Um, so it tells you what you're allowed to do with these things, um, but you want to attribute things to people. So, and it, it has links to that. So yeah. And I am going to find my options here. Breakout rooms. Thank you all for staying here. I'm have to find my breakout room options. There they are. Okay. So everybody should be able to see that much. That's one more thing. To look at how to build another with blocks.
Okay. So we are going to finish. Oh, as Robert just asked a great question. So it is possible to have a site title and title on Google, but not split on the site. Yes. So in order to do that, I'm going to show you how to do it. And that's also true of your logo and of your site icon. Where did the rest of my website go? Hold on, y'all. Not sure if my computer is having an issue or my theme is, uh, I think it's my computer though, actually. I have an update that I haven't installed. There it goes. Maybe. Okay, something odd is going on, I think, with my computer. Come on, thing, load, 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 load. I'm going to go to my front page. Edit this. There it goes. All right. <laughs> So in order to have um, your site title and tagline, but not have it on the front page, and I, I, I apologize, I do think that my computer is having some technical difficulties at the moment. It's just, it's loading things very, very slowly. It shouldn't be. Um, so I troubleshoot that later. Um, but in order to do that, let's say that I wanted to set icon. You'll notice the W has been replaced by the site icon that I picked, um, and you want a logo. Um, all you have to do is delete it. So this is my birdie.blog. Um, uh, this is just my, my title. I can choose to remove it. Or my site tagline is also on this page. I'm not sure why it's white. Again, I think it's my computer. It's not a connection issue just because this is locally on my website. I've never actually had this happen. So of course it would happen during a live workshop, but you can choose to remove it and it will stay, um, I believe from, from here to Google. Um, I generally recommend having at least a site title. The tagline doesn't need to necessarily be there, but you could just remove it. Um, and you'll notice that if I go and re-add it, so insert this after site tagline. If you can see it, you'll okay, let me double check this. You'll if you can see it now. Again, my computer is just having it's on the struggle bus today. Uh, real trials and tribulations from a parrot mom. What I added before just got re-added. It is still stored by WordPress. So yeah, let's um, let's finish up um, with a quick little video, and then we'll we'll call it for the day. You'll work on your headers, and I think I'm going to schedule another one for footers um, at a later date. Um, but let's uh, let's watch one last video so that you understand how to put things side by side. And your homework this week will be to uh, to work on just your header. So here we go. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask them in the chat and I will try and type out a response. Other tutorials that covers how to customize a header pattern. Press. In today's tutorial, we are going to create a new header using various types of blocks. The header is one of the most important areas of any website. It's the first thing that visitors see when they get to your site. And first impressions matter. A typical header usually has a logo, a site title, a navigation menu and other elements such as social icons. Today we are going to build two different headers using various blocks and also look at how to add a header pattern. Let's get started. I've created the pages for my site and I've installed a block theme, 2022. And this will give us access to the site editor where we will be able to manage our templates template parts and site-wide styles. If we click on the editor, it will take us into the site editor. And at the moment, this template is using one of the headers or template parts that is provided by the theme. You can customize this header or create your own. We are firstly going to create our own headers. To do that, we will make our way to template parts. Now remember, a template part is a block type used for structuring your site, such as headers or footers. Here is the list of template parts that come with this theme. We will click on Add New, top right, to create our own new header template part. Name it appropriately. In this case, we are going to call it Roblox. 
and select an image from our media library. I will go ahead and enlarge it slightly. Once I've done that, I'll open the list view and after the site logo, I'm going to add a group block as I want to stack blocks vertically. Then I will go ahead and insert the site title block. And below that, the site tagline block. Next, make sure you select the parent block, click on the inserter, and add your navigation block. The next important step is to use your list view and select the site logo block as well as the group block and put them together in a row using your block toolbar. And then select the parent block, open your sidebar settings, and below justification, select space between items. And now you will have your site logo, site title, and site tagline on the left, and your navigation block on your right. And lastly, I will change the background color of the header to gray. And once I click on the color, I can customize it as I please. When I save the template part, I can make my way back to the home template. Once here, we merely click on replace and select the template part we just created. The next thing we can do is create a bit of space between the header and the rest of the content on the page by using a spacer block. Okay, so you just saw that process there. Um, for the sake of time, we're going to pause it here. I'm going to get you a link to this video, though, in case you're like, wow, that's really interesting. I want to like use this as a, as a resource going forward. Um, there is that. Um, yeah, so your homework for this is to create a new header with blocks. Um, please keep an eye out on learn.wordpress.org if you or on Meetup, wherever you, you happen to find this. But if you would like to also build your footer, um, I'm going to try and make it a little bit more, um, more hands-on. So more of a, I'm building a footer, you're building a footer type thing. But in order to find our upcoming workshops, you can head to the calendar here that I'm sending to you. But this should give you a really strong foundation for building your, your header and also start, it, it's also building the foundation of, of working in the site editor. So <laughs> we're going slow to go fast here. Um, but yeah, I, I think I'm going to lo look ahead for the next uh, week or two here and we will maybe have a uh, create a four page WordPress website 2.5 footers. Um, so yeah, so that that's our time today. I'm going to answer just a couple more questions because you're asking really good. Um, but just know that you can find this here. You will also be able to find this recording. Well, let me pause it here so that you don't have to watch this part in the recording. <laughs> Hold on. Stop recording.